what, what nine more now out there yeah yeah nine left yeah and, and that a, a special guest as well by the way who just maybe like to say uh hello um not on camera but i can do audio for sure not unless you would like to be on camera but i have behind me uh the the artist john jude palancar uh hey john hey john long time to see yeah I'm actually your dad, Kit. <laughs> <laughs> let's all call let's all call John Dad now. Yeah, well, you're kind of like the same person. Yeah, it was a very touching episode. There was even uh, maybe hopefully they'll show some more uh, footage uh, that they have on a B roll somewhere someday. Uh, but it was it was very moving. It was neat to connect with some of these people the uh, the Chicago tr uh, treasure hunters and then the uh, the treasure hunters from uh, Cleveland as well to hear some of their uh, parts of their stories. Uh, and uh, then also to meet uh, and Jason, I think is his name, the, new, the newest member of that club and stuff. So, and actually talking with some of them, they triggered some of the, some of my memories that I've had mm -hmm. uh, with Byron and uh, how we came up with some of the clues. And, uh, and so it was, it was kind of neat that uh, I, it was like I, somebody jogged my memory and once I, Heard how detailed of their how detailed their explorations were of uh, paintings. I was said, you know, I remember when Byron said that. In some cases, now when we created these things, what I remember is that I would do sketches. We discussed clues, and uh, a lot of times things were done on the fly. We would uh, Byron would say something, and I'd say something, and I'd say, "How about this for an idea?" He said, "We'll put it in a painting," and uh, he'd get the painting. He would he would okay it sight unseen. And this is before the internet. This is before uh, any kind of high quality fax imagery that you could do. And uh, so he would be pleasantly surprised sometimes what I could come up with after we would discuss some of this on the fly over the phone. Another thing that I just realized that they, they didn't touch on, which they kind of missed a little bit, was that, uh, and what jogged my memory was the, uh, the flags that were on the USS Constitution. Some of those patterns appear in the robe of the, uh, the woman on the cover. So that was one of the things that I, that we didn't cover, uh, there. And, uh, there were a couple other, other points, uh, to that painting. And, uh, like I said, I'm loyal to my friend Byron beyond with the contracts and the, uh, the intellectual property that is owned by another entity now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that's still active. The, the treasure is still, still active and, uh, but it's kind of somewhat separated between the price family, I think, and the, uh, um, the present owner of the IP. So, uh, you know, I'm still bound by contractual things, but I still have loyalty to my friend, by the way, uh, who I miss dearly. Uh, I will, you know, hold what I know. And I never know where the treasures are. I know people think that I know more than I do. Like, as I mentioned, my memory gets jogged for some of the clues. And in other cases i mean uh, byron created this thing and he re really he took he took the secret with him and uh so he knows all i only know part and some of that is already been figured out by you, you guys you know, that's the uh, the loyal uh, tenacious treasure hunters that you guys are uh have uh you know one kept us alive which is Kind of neat because it was really the second project I ever worked on out of New York City back when I was just fresh out of art school and actually in my last year of art school. And that, even though I had been working professionally through school uh, at a much earlier, younger age, uh, this was these were my first kind of national um, assignments out of New York City for book publishing that I did. And to have this thing have this kind of legs and 40 years after uh, still being appreciated and, and uh, Activating people's imaginations, both young and old. I mean, I think meeting, um, what was his name? Was it Jason? It was Jason, yeah. yeah. Jason Such. Uh, the children are just as their imaginations and their their excitement over this thing. That, and at the same time, their father is out there looking for the treasures, you know, and he's kind of a kid at heart, I guess, because he designs games and uh, that kind of thing was, uh, was refreshing to see and how his family's together and you know, uh, people have gotten engaged and relationships have been made and friendships have been made and all kinds of things, you know? So it's, uh, you guys have kept it alive and I appreciate that for, uh, one, keeping my work in the news, which is a, a bit old and dated <laughs> now, but, uh, someone once remarked that they look like old head shop art, but, uh, 
uh, you know, it's, it's still there and I, I get a little bit of promotion on it and I, I run and tell all my friends, you know, with, uh, so they watch these episodes and been recognized now a few places. So it's, it's, it's kind of all good. Josh and his crew are just a great bunch of people to work with professional friendly. And it's always been an enjoyable, uh, time. They came over to my studio on the first episode and we had a great time, you know, donuts and coffee and, and then they were here for a lot longer. I gave them a lot of B-roll. <laughs> and uh, so uh, they, they have to edit it down. There's a, I wish there's a lot of stuff that they could that they could show from uh, some of those interactions of the conversations that we had. But they have, you know, they have a, a story to tell and they have to get it done within an hour. Or so I hope that he puts some of this stuff on, the, I guess, it on the kind of the sidebar or creates another episode with a. Uh, with some alternate footage. Yeah, that footage of you walking down the stairs was pretty. Was pretty sleek. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty. Yeah. Sleek. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a pretty. I, I told them they should have dry ice there actually. <laughs> kind, of, kind of make it look like a scene from Jacob's Ladder or something <laughs> from the movie. Just taken in this chair. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> there's the staircase scene. No. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, All right. I'm gonna go yeah. back to my studio, my my fortress of solitude. Thank you thanks, so much, John. Uh, yeah, thanks cool. for the message, John. If anybody wants to uh, own any of, of John's art, the podcast is auctioning off um, a, a sketch by John um, with 100% of the proceeds going to St. Jude in memory of Byron. You can find information on the basically all of the Facebook pages at this point. So, yeah, that was awesome. Basically, podcast live stream over now. How can we top that? Right. We can't. That was amazing. Thanks, Kit. Yeah, no problem. Well, I, I think I can turn this on now here. There we go. Oh, yay. There's Kit. Now I can fix Kit's video. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like, I could I could want nothing more out of that episode. That episode was amazing. Like, I completely agree. This that... is the most exciting news since color changing cups at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> those, I... so those split out first day, too. We had more. Uh, when those cups came out, I think we had more employees buy them off the shelves um, before the store was even opened, before customers could get to them. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so this episode embodied what I, I think about this treasure hunt. Like, it, it's it's all about family, community, people working together, keeping it stupid simple. Like, I, 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 I like couldn't, stupid I couldn't simple. Stupid simple. Right? There, there There's a, a home plate in the image. The word Boston yeah. is spelled out in the image. Like, it's... Oh, my like God. Oh, my God. You know? When JJP pointed out B O S, I was just losing it on the yeah, camera. Right? I'm losing it. I want to have my nine year old son solve all these for me now. Wow. Uh -huh. Right? <laughs> oh my goodness. That, uh, that painting at the end, uh, they showed Aragon, um, and then they showed a, a HP Lovecraft painting, and then they showed an image from Lord of the Rings. Um, I was the model for Frodo in that. Uh -huh. The the kids sit on the ground. That was what I think when I was like, I had to be maybe nine or ten years old, but that was uh I don't know, that was a really touching episode. Um Yeah, absolutely. My I had my wife and me both uh, tearing up. It was um it was pretty amazing to see, especially how they wrapped it up at the end, the ceremony they put together. Um it was absolutely heartwarming and just oh man. It was it was great. It couldn't have been done better. So yeah. so people have asked, what um do, do do you know what happened to the painting kit? Did they did Jason get to keep the painting? Or did your dad bring it home? Uh -huh. no, no, it's actually, I just, uh, well, I had my girlfriend watching the show with me and I was like, wait a minute, stay right here. I'll be right back. And I got out of the basement and I grabbed the painting. I found it. It was in some racks. It looked like it was, was put back and it wasn't even taken out. Um, and I, I brought it on a shoulder. Um, and it's just, uh, it's kind of spectacular to see that and you almost don't believe it. It's like going and seeing like the statue of David or like the, the PA dot. Um, in the Vatican, it's like, yeah, you're looking at it and you just don't yeah. realize, uh, like how many times this has been printed and how many times it's been sent to other people and how many times it's been looked at and, um, studied and scrutinized and taken apart and put back together. Um, and, and when you see it, you're kind of just like, oh man, you're, you're just, yeah. you don't even know it's what you're looking like at. The, the one that they showed on TV, the version they showed on TV, and then Josh Gates released a, a copy of it on the Facebook page. It's so much more vivid than the book. You, you, and you can tell it was painted in the '80s. It's got kind of that poppy '80s sort of color style. It's just, it's amazing to look at. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, and this just uh, goes to prove that uh, boots on the ground is absolutely required. No question about that. I mean, you can, we can get the city, no problem, right? We, we've got that hands down, but you've got to go to these places and actually look around to be able to figure out the finite clues. Um, it helps, obviously, if you know somebody from the area. I mean, come on, two of the three that I've found were from people that lived to where they were buried. They were intimately knowledgeable with the, the culture and the area. And just so easy, just... I, if this if this episode taught me anything, it's it's stop looking for references, stop looking for historical things, stop going from one point to the other to the other. Just look at the painting, figure out your city, and then do exactly what the verse tells you to do. It doesn't Boston like it. We we all assumed Boston was super hard, but but watching this solution evolve, like watching it play out, you realize he literally just did exactly what the verse told him to and dug exactly where the verse told him to dig, you know? Yeah, absolutely. If, if anything, the uh, the paintings are far more straightforward than we ever thought they were, and the verses, while they do have some play with them, aren't as playful as we yeah. may have originally thought. Um, like the five steps, um, uh, he mentioned the the five wars. I was like, eh, that's a stretch, and then one of our community members posted a, a map of the wars in that area, and there's ex they're actually already. I, I don't have a firm understanding of wars, which again is what I mean by if you're there in person and you live there and you know the culture, you're, you have a head, uh, a one up on everybody. And so on the map you posted, it actually it's already divided up into five wars, yep. and that's at the fifth war. I mean, that is what it is. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, I, th I think that some of the other, um, uh, paintings too like uh the the figure as a as a witch you know starting to identify what the the figures are doing i'm, I'm looking at the uh the the saint augustine image right now and i'm like hmm, a horse on a rock i'm like is there like a horse on a rock somewhere no. in florida you know that could do it i uh, you know it's like this very yeah. literal thing i like how you answered the question and i gotta i gotta yeah, I got yeah, a yeah, very glad of that. Well, of the of the uh, Castile de San Marcos in Saint Augustine and the verse. If that ends, up, if that verse ends up being anywhere other than Saint Augustine, I'm gonna have to cut off my arm. Like I. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so there's something I've been curious about, Kit, and you're probably the best one to answer this. Um, yeah. Treasure hunters aren't generally they're they're not artistically minded sometimes. So, and I think when an artist looks at these paintings, they see things differently than when, you know, a treasure hunter or a guy who's really into puzzles sees them. Um, I, it, it kind of, in this episode, it kind of seemed like your dad's not trying to give you like, this looks like this, so go here. It seems like he's trying to send a message with his art. Like something, instead of uh, something in the art representing something physical, it has sort of a, an artistic story. It's, uh, yes, yeah. it's symbolism. Um, and, and so, uh, I have a book in my studio right now that I, I probably should go grab, um, all about symbolism. It's like these different, uh, things that are depicted in artwork mean different things. Like I put, I'm looking at a drawing on my wall right now and, uh, I tend to use a lot of animals in my work and, um, uh, there, there's like different themes of religion in some of my work as well. So like a dog, for instance, represents to me, um, loyalty. You know, and so I'll put that in. It's also like innocence. Animals are, are very innocent. So there are these symbols that 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 occur in artwork um, that one object could represent another thing. And I think brushing up on um, uh, my dad's knowledge of art history is it's a it's a encyclopedia. It's just absolutely endless. Um, and and so knowing art history and what different. Um, symbols mean like i okay so a thing in art history one that i learned was that if there was a female figure with her arm behind her head like this it means she was like either a prostitute or she was like ready to go that was like, that's a symbol so if you see that in in artwork um from you know renaissance um or, or italian art uh that's probably who that person is um so i mean that's that's one way of looking at it and i, I guess another a, a tip for looking at images like this is to squint your eyes sometimes. When you squint your eyes and look at something, you see things a little bit more simply. Yeah. And your dad, like, if you look at his, especially his current art, it's full of weird symbolism. You know, you can, his his art almost, just looking at a painting, it almost tells a story, you know? So that's, that's probably the main... Yeah. 
I way that we've been looking at these images incorrectly. And I think Chicago and Cleveland caused us to make that mistake because Cleveland especially is so visually descriptive. I mean, those columns are spot on and those that that planner spot on, you know, and that's that's probably what caused us to slip up a little bit. Right. And I think there are certain things in the um, the the images that are where it's buried, but they're just uh, they're they're tucked away so well and they fit in that it's they are hiding in, in plain sight. And I've been told that before by hmm. the man, the myth and the legend. That they they are right. And like in that, front of you. that home He's plate on her thought. sleeve. Like who, who would have ever thought that? And it, it, it was just an evil, like metal yeah. piece on her. And it looks like no, no. there's a leg, like a foot stepping on home plate. That's so obvious in hindsight. But you know, nobody came up with it except for Jason. Actually, probably not Jason. It was probably like uh, Jack or Molly. Like those those seem like the real heroes of the Lost and Hunt. It was Jack and Molly the kids. Yeah, yeah. Bye, Bradley. <laughs> oh, did Bradley leave? <laughs> oh, that's sad. At least we got yeah. a really uh, cute frozen face there. I, I maybe his uh, internet cut out here. Well, I mean, we don't <laughs> after after all this, we don't have to stay on very much longer. Um, there weren't too many points I wanted to hit on that we will be able to expand a little bit later. I um, I've uh, I, I got some messages back and forth with Jason. We're gonna try to get a podcast episode recorded soon. It sounds like. Um. And then do you, you want to come on that, kid? Talk about some art? All right, cool. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, I think we're going to sure. try to get Rob and uh, may, hopefully Eric and maybe either Andy or Brian, see if we can get them all together on one podcast. I think it'd be kind of cool. Hell yeah. All right, guys, we'll, yeah. we'll head out. Thanks for watching EU with us. Um, thanks for watching the live stream. All of our minds are blown, and I got to get some sleep. So have a good night, kid. Yeah. You too, George. Take it easy. Friday, right, back, back. But that's 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 that